Hello and thanks for watching this next video. Uh, another problem looking at testing for equality across multiple population proportions. So this is our third video on this um, on this topic. So I'll keep this one a little bit quick, I think. So here we're looking at a local car dealership who is interested in determining customer satisfaction and brand loyalty. So they sample owners of three different brands of vehicles and ask whether or not they're likely to buy the same brand when they purchase a new car or shop around. So here's our table of observed frequencies. So in the notation, uh, when we're looking at this problem, the notation here, these are the observed frequencies, F, I, J. I can refer to the rows and J refers to the three columns. So we, had, we need to formulate our test. Well, we have null and alternative hypotheses. We have one, two, three different populations that we're comparing. So this is our null states that the proportion of Ford owners who would repurchase is the same as GMC, is the same as Chevy. The alternative is simply not all are equal. And we can do this test at whatever level of significance we want. Okay, so part B, so that's A is done. Part B has to compute the expected frequencies. So that's filling in this table down here. The reason we need that is because this test statistic, the upper tail chi-squared test, um, requires this difference between the observed values, the expected uh, frequencies, and then squared, and those are all added together. Well, they're divided by this first, and then they're added together. So we have to first obtain all of those expected um, expected frequencies. So the formula for that, it's relatively straightforward. We just need to calculate the product of the relevant row, so row i total, multiplied by column j total, and we divide it by the total number of observations. So for example, if we're looking at this one here, the number of Ford owners who are likely to repurchase the expected uh, frequency, that would be the column total times the row total divided by the total number of observations. So here we would have simply 156 times 276 divided by 541. So that gives us about 79.6. Okay, and then if we fill in all of these, I'm gonna, I'll show you a couple more, but I'm going to cheat a little bit. So the next one, if we do GMC, that would be using the appropriate column total, so it would be using 167 instead of 156. So this is 167 times 276 divided by 541, so 85.2. The next one, 103, oops, I want this column now. So 218 times 276 divided by 541, so 111.2. And those totals, they should all be exactly the same. Uh, it's a good way to check your algebra just to make sure you haven't made any mistake. All of those row and column totals should always add up to be the same amount. So if we do it now for the no, I guess I am going to go through all of these. Now we need to go back to the Ford total, and now that row total is for the no responses. So the next one here will be 156 times 265 divided by 541. So 76.4. Okay, and the next one, now we're using 167 times 265, always divided by the same, 81.8. And the last one here, uh, where am I? 218 times 265 divided by 541. So that's 
Okay, and then you can fill in all of these. We don't actually need these totals for anything, but why not fill them in just to complete the table. Okay, so there we have all of our expected uh, frequencies. Now, now we can go ahead and calculate our test statistic. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room. I need those. So what we can do, here I'll just do this, uh, try to do this in one swoop. So I'm just going to calculate all of these differences. So these are just our numerator values. Minus, so the observed frequency minus the expected frequency, square that and divide it by the expected frequency. And then we'll add all of those up. And so somewhere down here, that will be our test statistic, our chi-squared. So the first one, here if we're looking at Ford, so I'll go through each brand first. So I'll do Ford, yes, Ford, no, and then I'll do GMC, yes, GMC, no. So the first one, I'm looking at, oops, let me just find a highlighter. So this observed frequency minus this expected frequency and divided, squared and divided by the expected frequency. So that's going to be 95, oops, 95 minus 79.6 squared divided by 79.6. So that's 2.98 for that first one. 2.98 and then the next one we'll do the Ford no so 61 and 76.4 61 minus 76.4 divided by the expected 76.4 so negative uh, 2 Oops, I think I forgot to square it, didn't I? 61 minus 76.4 squared divided by 76.4. There we go, 3.1. That's a little better. Oops. Oh no. This is what I want. 3.1. Okay, and then if we do that same calculation for each of them, it's going to make this video a long one. Uh, I'll do the next ones. I'll just go a little bit more fast. So the next one will be the yes and the yes here. So I'll just fill this in. I've got the answers on the screen in front of me. So we have 2.9, 3.1. The next one would be 0 0.6, 0 0.63, 0 0.61. Interesting that these are all coming up 0 0.6s, 0 0.63. And when we add all of those together, we have 2.98 plus 3.1 plus 0.6 plus 0.63 plus 0.61 plus 0.63 and we have 8.55 8.55 so there's our final test statistic 8.55 so that's good we've done B now we can do C, figure out our p-value, our critical value. So our critical value, we do this at the 05 level of significance. Degrees of freedom is k minus 1. k is 3. We have 1, 2, 3 different populations that we're comparing. So 2 degrees of freedom. So this is going to be 2 degrees of freedom. Alpha is 05. There's our critical value, 5991. Oops. So there's 5991. We reject if our test statistic is greater than or equal to that critical value. That's our rejection rule. And of course, 855 is definitely greater than 5991. So we do have evidence here to reject our null hypotheses. So we can reject this. We have evidence to show not all of these proportions are equal. So there is a difference in the proportion of these three different vehicle owners uh, that are likely to repurchase that same brand of vehicle. So we've got C done. 
we've got D done. I just gave you an interpretation of that conclusion. Uh, so the next part, if appropriate, use the Marisquilio procedure to determine where the difference lies. So we've, we've identified that a difference exists. Now we need to identify where is that difference. So for this, I'm going to actually start another video just so I can keep it nice and quick. Uh, and we'll do part E uh, in, that, in a separate video because there's a few more little calculations that we need to do there. Okay, so there's a nice quick, uh, quick version of uh, this test on multiple population proportions. Thanks for watching. I hope it was not too quick. Hope it was helpful. Okay, bye-bye.